I um, I only want to show this. Okay, well, I think that's okay. I think I'm here. <clears throat> So, good evening, everybody. Um, perhaps after tonight, you'll probably not want to come to Stempex to hear me again. But uh, anyway, um, thanks for agreeing to um, let me indulge myself with my US thematic uh, material, um, because I don't make any apologies. This is all self-indulgent. Uh, what I'm showing is what I enjoy and find interesting, and I'm not giving very much thought to what the audience might think. And there's also probably too much material. I mean, 50 states is a lot to get through. We're not going to do them all, but uh, it's still a lot to get through. So um, I'll try and do it, move along fairly quickly. So I first put this together um, for my presidential display when I was president of Glasgow Thematic Society, which is the oldest thematic society in the UK, I think. Um, and I've been quite keen to update that display and get the opportunity to show it again. Uh, sadly, the um, first bit of the ambition remains work in progress, um, but uh, it is great to have the opportunity uh, to show it again pretty much um, as it was, with, as you'll see, one or two changes. And one of these days I'll get around to it. Um, and as, as Barry's warned you, the only similarity with one of my exhibits is that there's not much white space on the page once I've finished. So. A good starting point um, is an Uncle Sam recruiting poster um, for uh, the US Army. Uh, that has been morphed uh, into quite a liver cartoon. I think you can probably all, all recognize the person who's looking up at the, uh, but it's probably wishful thinking. Um, and I can only apologize, as I say here, for my scary um, second slide, which is here. And um, as I say there, uh, to see ourselves as others see it, I think, is the uh, expression here. So um, this particular president doesn't actually appear, but um, uh, has been photoshopped on apparently. And it is true that uh, he really did ask the governor of North Carolina, how he get his um, his uh, picture added to um, Mount Rushmore, and uh, later tweeted that he thought it'd be a good idea. So um, there we are. So as Barry's told you, that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, I can't resist, before I start, a little bit of this day in history. So on the 15th of August, 1914, the Panama Canal opened to traffic. Um, there's a well-known cartoon, uh, sorry, a postcard, uh, The Kiss of the Oceans. You see the meeting at the Panama Canal. A um, couple of canal zone stamps, one of them with the overprinted map and one with canal zone postage, an aerial view of the canal appropriately for an airmail stamp. Um, you also get the uh, American stamps, and the first one um, shows President Roosevelt, who oversaw the um, realization of what had been a long-term plan, strategic plan to, to build the canal. And then the other chap is called George Washington Guthals, who supervised the construction of the canal. Um, and then there's another stamp for Celebrate the Century, which came out showing something going to ship going through the canal. And amusingly, I don't know if you saw recently, there's been a drought in the region and uh, apparently the water level is low in the, in the canal and the bigger boats can't get through so they're queued up on, on either side of the canal. So I hope it's um, an orderly queue. If I was doing this um, face to face, I would have a little quiz for you to think about. And I thought I'd put it up anyway tonight because it gives most of you something to think about while I drone on about um, various states. So the smallest geographical area, largest, highest population, lowest population, 
densest population, highest per capita income, and then in which state is the most easterly point of the USA, and in which state is the most westerly point. And just to be clear, that's the contiguous 48 states of the USA, uh, doesn't include Alaska and doesn't include Hawaii. So we'll come back to that um, later on. So we're going to head to the states. Uh, and the obvious starting point, of course, is Washington, D.C., which isn't a state. Um, but I was a little bit surprised to find that um, what they've tried several times to get Washington, um, to give Washington state status, uh, but they've failed usually because of uh, the politics never quite seemed to, to work. Uh, because Washington, D.C. wasn't the, the only capital of the U.S. Uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Lancaster, York, Princeton, Annapolis, Trenton, New Jersey, and New York have all been capital at some time. But Washington, D.C. has been capital from the 6th of December, um, 1790. So the slide in Washington, there's a little bit about the formation um, of the capital found as the seat of government following the American Resolution, Revolution. Um, and, and they deliberately didn't give it a status of a state at the time. It was to be federal district under jurisdiction of Congress. And obviously named after George Washington. Um, there's the DC flag, which was adopted in 1938. And then you can see the cherry blossom there, which um, Washington is famous for. Um, I once went specially to see the cherry blossom and uh, discovered it was the earliest that had ever come out and I had missed it. But if I'd been there last week. Uh, lots of iconic Washington buildings. There's a Capitol building, um, Supreme Court building, uh, White House. Uh, the Smithsonian um, Institution, the original building. And then most importantly, I guess, for philatelists, is the National Postal Museum, which is another um, Smithsonian uh, museum. And the Postal Museum is dedicated to the preservation and study and presentation of postal history and philately. Um, it it's uses exhibitions, um, there are public programs and research, and it's I thoroughly recommended if you go there to visit. A couple of varieties in Washington, D.C. Um, I have one or two of these USPS photo, um, either essays or um, uh, photos of stamps. So this is a photo essay of the sesquicentennial stamp for the 150th um, anniversary. Um, it's pretty much the same as the original stamp except you can see the um, the typing, the type face is a little bit different um, in the, the photo essay. Normally these came out sequentially before the stamp was produced, and then you get the final printing of the stamp. And then there's the, the bicentennial stamp um, on the top and on the bottom the error with the um, value missing. So you see the, the circle USA 29 cents at top and it's missing in the bottom stamp. But just quite an interesting, um, interesting uh, variety. Um, maybe before I just talk about the states, I mean, why am I um, why am I interested in the states? Well, I, I've been. I, I guess I've been um, over the years. I've been quite keen on America and things American. Um, and hadn't really bothered too much with the stamps, but um, uh, I've got a couple of friends who I first visited the US with, one of them in 1979 when we, we did the West Coast and the way that Americans do Europe in about 10 days, and then again in 1981 when I did the East Coast. Um, and we've gone back various times since then, principally to play golf, and then we'll go and visit a couple of other things. And uh, I've also got a brother-in-law who lives in the States and um, they lived in Santa Cruz for quite a long time, which was no hardship to visit. Then they went to Washington State, which was again, no hardship. 
And more recently, they moved to Dallas, which is a, a somewhat less appealing. Um, so at, on these visits, we go and visit other bits of the states. And a few years ago, we all realized that we'd visited quite a bit of the US. But my two chums decided that they were going to visit all 50 states. And there were maybe a couple of road trips away from finishing it when I decided that I put this display together um, and beat them to it. So um, could I do all 50 states before them? Uh, I'll leave it to you to decide if I've met my goal. But um, one reason to do it was to humiliate them because they've been doing it for 40 years and I did it in three months. But I, I probably end up as the one who's humiliated because they keep pointing out errors and omissions on my sheets. Anyway, we've got 50 states, but there, well, actually it's only 46 because there are fourth commonwealths. Um, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Virginia, and Massachusetts are all commonwealths, although in practice there's no difference. When was the last or the most recent US state admitted? Well, that was Hawaii, 64 years ago, August um, 1959. And then two states that were proposed but never happened. Uh, a couple of examples, Desiree, which was proposed by the Mormon pioneers. Um, they ended up with Utah, of course, and Sequoia, which was obviously meant to be a, um, a native Indian um, state, um, but obviously, again, was, uh, was not agreed. So my physical display um, has a double sheet for every state, and it looks a bit like this. Uh, now, so clearly that's not fit for Zoom purposes. So I'm just going to take one of these. Um, I'm going to go to Honolulu, which is only 6,800 miles away. And I'm going to talk about the Honolulu page. So all the pages look roughly similar to this. Um, we start off with some interesting information. So um, what's the state? When was it... Um, uh, form. So Hawaii is the 50th state and it's 21st August 59. Um, we've got the US flag just to anchor us. We've got the state capital is Honolulu. I mean, as you'll know, um, learning state capitals of America is quite interesting because it's quite often not a city that you would expect. Uh, there's the postcode, uh, there's the state flag, and there's the population at the last um, census, so 2017. In the case of Hawaii, um, 1.4 million. Um, I then have a typically show a postcard with a map of the state. So try and find an attractive looking postcard that give you a bit of information um, on the various locations. And then it gives you some information on how far Hawaii is from various locations around the world. Um, I found this. Um, series of postcards uh, which um, shows each of the states uh, roughly uh, the, the map of the state but using stamps, cutouts of stamps um, that were um, relevant to the state. So you'll see in the case of Hawaii there are four different um, cutouts. Um, up, up there you, you have um, a Hawaiian chief. So left. Oh, sorry. No, the the left. This stamp shows King Kamehameha, who first united the Hawaiian Islands. Apparently, we'll we'll come back to the second and third stamps, and then the fourth stamp uh, in the year after um, a country becomes um, a chief statehood they add the extra star onto the flag. So 1960 was the first time that 50 stars appeared after um, Hawaii and Alaska were both um, admitted in 1959. Uh, and then most um, states will have a nickname and a motto. So the, the Hawaii is called the Aloha State. And I wouldn't even tell you what the... Um, motto um, means. So a few stamps that we have. So we, we have the statehood stamp. So here we are with a, um, a 
Hawaiian chief, which is called an alihi, and uh, he's holding a lei, which is the flowers that they welcome you with when you um, step off the aeroplane in Hawaii. You've got a map of the islands there, and you have a single star um, representing statehood. As I've said, they add that star to the, um, the US flag uh, the year after a state is adopted. You've got the state flag of um, Hawaii. The, there's been a number of American issues with state flags, so there's a couple of them um, there. They brought one out for the bicentennial, and then they brought another set out in 2008. Um, you've got state symbols. So you've got um, the uh, Hawaiian goose, which is the state bird, and the hibiscus, which is the state flower. Um, and that was a set that came out in 1982. We'll come back to that. You've got physical features um, like uh, Molokai, one of the highest sea cliffs um, in the United States. Again, a series of 50 stamps. And then you've got other connections. So there's um, a set of Aloha shirts, which is presumably the sort of thing that Barry wears when he goes on holiday. Um, 1928 was the 150th anniversary of Cook's landing. Um, USPS said they couldn't afford to issue new stamps for that, but they eventually agreed to issue a pair of overprinted stamps. There were two values overprinted. Uh, on the left there, you see the two cent George Washington and overprinted on the right, Hawaii 1778 to 1928. Um, for each of the states, I try to find an early cover or postal item. Uh, here we've got a postal stationery card. Um, you've got a, a map cache for the stamp. And you can see that Hawaii, of course, is right in the middle of the world, as you would expect it to be um, from their perspective. And then if there's a gap left in the page, which is pretty hard to believe, um, we can find something else. So here's a Hawaiian monk seal, which is an endangered species. And this stamp came out in 1996. So we mix all of that up. Et voila, put it all on a page. And that's what it looks like. So that's how we've um, I've put together um, these pages and the sort of material um, that I'm going to talk a little bit, bit of, a bit a little bit more about um, as we go through today. And um, we've done that 50 times, you've done your 50 states. So the next challenge was try to um, present the states. And generally I go from one to 50 in order of statehood because very broadly that kind of mirrors how the US has expanded from east to west. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about the 13 colonies, some of the states who succeeded, seceded, a selection of other states in the last 10. So the founding states, well, these were the original 13 British colonies. And when each ratified the constitution um, after the War of Independence, uh, they became states. And you can see there, there's three broadly three groupings, the New England, the Middle, and the Southern. And we'll see the relevance of that um, later we talk about the Civil War. So we start with Delaware. So that's the information at the top, tells you what the capital is when they um, were adopted the Constitution. Uh, so they were first to do it, and the population of Delaware is a million. So a couple of things about Delaware, there's 200 times more chickens and people, and there are more businesses incorporated in Delaware than there are people living in Delaware. Now, it's long been a, um, a tradition that companies um, set up in, in Delaware, and that's because they have a particularly um, attractive uh, tax position. So that if, you're a, if you um, are registered in Delaware but don't do any business in the state, then you don't pay any corporation um, tax. So that's what's given Delaware um, this advantage. Yeah. 
Um, so Delaware was where the Swedes and Finns landed in uh, 1638. Um, and there was a stamp issue for the 300, 1688, 38, oh, it was 88, 250th anniversary um, of the Swedes and Finns. Uh, there's a cover from Delaware City um, that was sent during the war. So um, Major Bullock was a prisoner in Delaware prison. Uh, he was allowed to write one sheet to his wife. And as you can see there, it was um, examined, every prisoner's letter was examined to say that, to make sure he wasn't doing anything um, untoward. And there's another set of 50 stamps, greetings from Delaware, um, which was the fifth pane of U US pane with 50 stamps in it for each state. And then you can always find somebody famous who comes from a particular state. Um, here we've got Howard Pyle, um, who was a famous um, illustrator, and uh, that's one of his il book illustrations there. And very imaginatively, the first state, the small wonder, the diamond state, the blue hen state. So not exactly. Now I said that um, America produced a number of sheets of 50, so we've got 50 states, it was very convenient. Um, you could then have a sheet of 50 stamps. And there's our state birds and flowers set in 1982. And there's that greeting set that came out um, in 2002. And these were, um, these sheets were actually black blotted by the American Philatelic Society. Um, so when, when the post office issued stamps that had no postal necessity, excessive numbers of individual stamps, high values relative to the needs of the country, or issues that included uh, intentional errors or imperfs, um, they issued a black blot. And it started in the 1960s, went through to the 1990s, and then was discontinued because um, it became apparent that almost all new US stamps should be black blotted. Um, but despite that, the, the first issue of 50 state flags proved very popular. Uh, here's Pennsylvania, um, the chocolate capital of the world. I don't know why, because it's appalling. Uh, what are we going to appeal to? There's something with Pennsylvania, the Philadelphia Exposition of 1899. It's an advertising front um, sent within Pennsylvania. Uh, Declaration of Independence were written in Philadelphia, which is where the Liberty Bell is, and there's a couple of them. Um, a, sort of a booklet um, set of five and a later first class forever stamp um, with Liberty Bell. And it's, um, it, it, it's, Liberty Bell is on display um, in front of Independence Hall in, in the center of um, Philadelphia. New Jersey, the diner capital of the country. Um, sorry, I off that one rather quickly. I can go back up here. Oh. Sorry, lost my place. So New Jersey is considered the, the diner capital. So these old fashioned American diners, they've got 525 of them apparently. Um, and Atlantic City has got the largest boardwalk. Um, but here are, I think, four different things about um, Princeton. So you've got Princeton, sorry, about um, New Jersey. You've got Princeton, um, which has got a worldwide reputation and has been around since 1756. Um, there's the tercentenary of the first European to explore the coast. Um, American football, of course, is a big thing in America. And that was the centenary of the first intercollegiate game. Um, which involved New Jersey College. And then Old Blue Eyes, who was born in New Jersey and uh, is one of the very few artists who have sold more than 500 million records. So just always looking for something that may be slightly different connection. Uh, Georgia, known for the three Ps, peaches, peanuts, and pecans. Um, there's a, 
monument uh, in Georgia. And it's no wonder that um, hey, President Carter was called the peanut was called the peanut president, but um, partly because he came from Georgia and partly because he was also um, a peanut farmer in an early existence. Um, so we had the state flag, which was changed to try and take away um, overlay, emphasizing the um, Confederacy. Um, there's the state bird and the state flower on that stamp. And there's a lighthouse, um, which helps to navigate at the mouth of the Savannah River. Connecticut. Uh, speed laws, 12 minutes in cities, 15 minutes in country roads. Probably about the speed limit in London at the moment anyway, with uh, all the traffic. Um, Connecticut's home to Yale um, University. And that was a cover from um, Connecticut to New York. And you can see the imprint of Yale class of 64 um, in the top left corner. That's the Charter Oak in Hartford, um, Connecticut, where the original charter um, was supposedly hidden. And down the bottom, you see one of these imperforates that was issued by James Farley, the Postmaster General, which um, is a whole other story. And maybe un unexpectedly, we find William Shakespeare, and uh, um, that was issued at Stratford, Connecticut, which is the home of the American Shakespeare Festival. Massachusetts, um, the cranberry and the baked bean. Um, you see there a postcard there with a map showing the map of uh, Massachusetts and its distinctive shape because of Cape Cod. Um, uh, American children learn to, um, they learn the states um, by their shape. Um, I, I find it very difficult to, um, um, to go back to do that, but there we are. Um, there's the uh, Boston Tea Party, where the uh, American War of Independence um, started. You've got Plymouth Rock, where the Mayflower Pilgrims um, founded the colony in 1620. Uh, Boston is a sports mad city, and it's the home of the Boston Red Sox, uh, Fenway Park. And then it's got many famous buildings. Um, and there's the uh, Old North Church, which is, was made famous by um, Paul Revere. So the, the, what happened was that Revere tells a friend to put a signal lanterns in the Old North Church to tell him whether the, the British will attack by land or sea. And then when he gets the signal across the river in Charlestown, he would spread the alarm through Middlesex County. Um, and the friend goes up the steeple, sets up two lanterns, telling him that they're coming by sea, and Revere rides his horse to warn the patriots. Uh, at least it's with a little bit of license, um, that is the story. Maryland, um, it's got quite strong uh, British connections, um, as you can see. Again, we've got um, the, the stamp and the card showing the state um, bird and the state um, flower, Baltimore Oriole and a black-eyed Susan. There's a postal stationery card um, from purveyors of sugars, coffees and teas. I think it's telling somebody that um, a salesman will call on them at a particular date. And then there's a stamp for Benjamin Banneker, who was a famous son of Maryland. And he was a self-educated mathematician and astronomer. And he uh, constructed the first uh, all-American wooden clock in 1753. He then went on to study astronomy and he correctly predicted a solar eclipse in 1789, all self-educated. 
South Carolina, um, that was a surprise to me, they produced more peaches in Georgia. Uh, but the important thing about um, South Carolina is, of course, um, Pinehurst, um, which is the golf resort. And um, the number two course is where the US Open is played every seven or eight years. And it was designed by Donald Ross, who hails from Dornoch in Scotland, which is Scotland's premier, in my view, golfing location. It's nicknamed the Palmetto State. There's greetings from South Carolina. There's the Carolina Charter, which established it as a British um, colony. And there's Fort Sumter, which is the site of the first um, shots uh, of the Civil War as the Confederates fired on Fort Sumter on the 12th of April, 1861. And that um, sparked off the Civil War. Uh, this is my latest acquisition. So it's a cover from Charleston, um, South Carolina to Curacao in the West Indies. Um, but interestingly, uh, goes via St. Thomas in Danish West Indies, which is another um, of my collections. So I'm also interested in things that go via Danish West Indies. And if I get two for one, so two things that do two collections, that's even better. So this one it does both. Um, so it's got a um, two cent uh, entire. It's got a 1887 duplex cancel. Um, it's got a transit St. Thomas mark on the back. Um, and it's got an arrival um, in Curacao. So on the 27th of June, which is just over five or just over five weeks, which is pretty good, I would have thought. New Hampshire. Um, one of the windiest places on earth, Mount Washington. Um, and as I say, it's the only state where you don't need to wear a seatbelt, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't um, do one. And the Mount Washington story must be true because it comes up in an American stamp. Um, New Hampshire, importantly, was the ninth um, state to ratify the Constitution, and they always um, said that would be the um, deciding state. So when the ninth state um, ratified the Constitution, um, it meant that uh, the US would be a republic and never have any other form of government. And then two sons of New Hampshire, Sullivan, who um, led a successful um, expedition against the Indians but didn't endear himself to too many people. Um, and then Webster, who's a highly regarded lawyer, um, not the Webster of Webster's Dictionary, that was his son Noah um, who uh, did that. Virginia, um, West Virginia divided from Virginia over succession from the Union. Um, and West Virginia was then admitted back to the Union as a new state in 1863. Um, you can see a couple of Facts about Virginia. Uh, there's a nice um, advertising cover with a map showing all the ways that you can connect from Suffolk, um, Virginia. And then we had the Jamestown was the first English settlement in America, 300th anniversary. There's John Smith, one of the early settlers. There they are coming ashore. Um, and there's Pocahontas, who allegedly saved Smith from a untimely death, but actually probably didn't. It was probably all made up. Um, some of the, his tales were about as tall as her top hat. Uh, but she did come to Europe and became quite a sensation for a couple of years before she died quite young. New York. Um, I didn't believe that statistic about Adirondack Park, but apparently it is true. Uh, it did check. And then your um, last one about the Big Apple apparently refers to prizes awarded at horse racing. And since it meant the ultimate prize, the New York Tourism Board adopted it 
uh, and it's become rather successful. So um, I think that's been very helpful in promoting New York. Uh, there's a very nice um, advertising cover for revolving double maps of America. Um, and there's a stamp that came out for the 1939-40 World Fair um, showing two of the most famous images of the fair, these um, rather futuristic um, buildings. And then just because I've got one Scott to uncover, so that one of the first two stamps that were issued by America, um, and that one was being sent to Canada, um, November the 4th. 1849 transit mark. Quite a nice cover. North Carolina. Um, uh, the Wright brothers completed their first flight. We'll, we'll not argue about that. They, um, uh, there is some debate as to whether that was actually the first, but there we are. Uh, we thought I'd show you something different here. Duck stamps are um, obviously um, for hunting, but um, they are very popular uh, across a whole number of states. Um, the artists uh, are particularly um, well known usually, and they have an annual competition um, for the best design. And uh, you can see there are a number of uh, what, four different artists um, on these different stamps from 1990 to 93. Um, North Carolina was where um, Walter Raleigh um, tried to establish a colony, but he didn't actually um, step foot on North Carolina. And there's their flowering dogwood. And then Rhode Island, um, as you see there, smallest state, the longest names, and where the US Tennis Hall of Fame is. Uh, there's a pre-stamp cover, 1825. Um, with um, uh, 25 and a half cents, which was 17 cents for the distance, plus a 50% surcharge because of the war of 1812. Um, there's the 300th anniversary of the first settlement um, in Rhode Island. There's a synagogue, the oldest synagogue in America, apparently. And there's a, an anchor in hope um, it's called the Ocean State. Uh, Kentucky, there's a pretty, there's a nice um, fancy cancellation. I mean, very philatelic, but these things were quite popular in the 1929, the late 20s, 20s and early 30s. Um, and that was cancelled on Washington's birthday, apparently. So it's particularly nice. And there's just Fort Knox, which is... Um, uh, a, a big uh, army centre and school in um, Kentucky, honouring George Patton. Uh, Ohio, that just gives me a chance to show you Scott one on cover. So that's the other, the first of the, the two stamps that came out. Um, and you can see it nice um, red grid cancellation, um, Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, over Ohio, um, and there's a 14 May with four manuscript sent within um, Ohio. A lot of these um, early cancellations didn't have the year, so you've just got to guess the year from something else. Um, Missouri, they've got Lewis and Clark connections, a lot of Indian connections, and the Gateway with Arch in St. Louis. Sorry, I'm having to press on here. Confederacy um, started off with seven states, ended up with 13. Um, Confederacy developed their own stamps and postal system. So there's a cover, um, that's the number one um, on a Charleston cover, 1863. And there's number 13, just a mint um, stamp that's been cut out from the pain. So the red states are all the con all the uh, Confederate states. Um, light blue were um, primarily Union, but um, there was some um, slavery and uh, some was uh, 
friendliness towards the, the south, and then you've got the um, northern Union states and the California. Um, as I said, their civil war began in April 61, um, and then uh, Jackson um, officially called an end in May 65. Yeah, this is not state related, but I discovered the, this set of envelopes, um, illustrated envelopes, which depicts it as a boxing match between Lincoln and Davis. And um, uh, they've got four rounds you can see here. You can see the um, Lincoln's chasing him off and Davis is saying, let's fall back on, on Richmond. Um, we've got round three um, where Lincoln is promising to smother those pirates. And round four, um, where two of the generals are, are talking to each other. Um, I thought that was a rather attractive set. Unfortunately, I didn't do any homework when I bought the four covers uh, and I discovered that there was actually a fifth one. Um, and that's the fifth one here, which uh, neatly brings the whole thing together um, with the championship belt. And Lincoln saying, you shall have my impartial, constitutional and humble protection. And you can see there, it was a set of five envelopes. As I say, I didn't know that. <laughs> From Tingley in New York. Um, so I'll be on the lookout for number five, um, but I'm not particularly um, hopeful of, um, of finding it. Right, so a few Confederate states, um, Tennessee, um, a rather unusual destination going to Finland, um, and then Elvis, the king of rock and roll. Uh, he wasn't born in Tennessee, he was born in Mississippi, um, but he made his name in Tennessee, and he's um, obviously um, highly regarded um, from Tennessee. As you see, that's the old, the more recent stamp. That's the, the original Elvis stamp, where they printed um, 517 million of them, uh, which was three times the usual print run for a commemorative, and it's the most widely publicized and best-selling U.S. commemorative of all time. Um, Louisiana, well, that's associated with Louisiana Purchase. You can see in the Cinderella the extent of the land purchase, I mean, it goes much beyond Louisiana itself. Um, that was a stamp that came out showing the same thing. Um, there's the 150th anniversary of it. Um, and they basically paid um, peanuts for it. Uh, they, were, they sent over um, two people to negotiate and uh, they weren't able to refer back to the president. They just went ahead and bought it because he wanted the deal um, to be to be done. And uh, I think it, you, out of um, Louisiana, purchase has come eight um, American states. You've got Louisiana itself, but you've also got Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. And Alexander Hamilton of Hamilton fame um, opposed the deal, but um, just shows they don't get everything right. And there's a map showing the distinctive shape of the state. Again, that's probably an easy one to um, to learn. Mississippi, um, again, an exposition. Um, one of the nicest set of American stamps. Um, Father Marquette, who's a Jesuit missionary who explored the, the upper river. You've got farming, you've got Indian hunting, you've got Fremont, who made three expeditions to cross the, the Rockies uh, to find his way to California. There's troops guarding a train, hardship, emigration, Western mining, and then one of the most famous American stamps, Cattle in a Snowstorm, which you would think is a, an American scene, but was actually painted in the Scottish Highlands. But there you are. Uh, Alabama, that's um, got Confederate number one uh, on that cover. And there's a cover from Mobile to London, which was redirected on arrival on a penny stamp. The Arkansas, oh, 
Uh, so you have that little hand-painted map on the left, Little Rock in the centre of the state. And you've got another one of these fancy postmarks with a bear cancellation. Florida flowers. And then you've got the Keys um, stretching down to um, Key West. And the Keys were first connected by a railway before the highway. Um, Henry Flagler's Overseas Railway, um, which was finished in 1910. It was destroyed in the um, Labor Day hurricane of 1935, and it was then converted into a high overseas. It was called the Overseas Highway, um, but it's part of Highway 1, US Highway 1. Texas, the Lone Star State, um, because it saw itself as an independent republic. Um, there's the centenary of independence. Uh, two of the famous, Sam Houston, who won the battle, and Stephen Austin, who initially um, settled a lot of people there. And there's the centenary of state, statehood. And you've got the 28th star, because Texas was the 28th state, um, out to the single star um, on the flag. And again, um, here's a photo essay, which was similar to the final design, but different lettering. And you'll see on the left, it says Centennial, and you'll see on the right, it says Statehood, um, as the stamp was issued. And you can see also that the, the rays of sun are a bit more solid um, on the photo essay than they were in the final stamp. Um, now, I'm just going to do one thing from each of these. So there's um, uh, Indiana, bottom right, um, Indianapolis 500, the greatest spectacle in racing. And I think that's a lovely stamp, part of our stamp, um, to celebrate the centenary. Very nice. Uh, Maine. Um, my wife's very fond of cats, so that Maine coon cat on the left-hand side there, um, she would find it very, very appealing. And then you've got Henry Longfellow, uh, Wordsworth Longfellow on the right, um, with the, um, I've already talked about Revere, um, a bit of poetic license, but um, listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. And then finishes, the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying hoofbeats of that steed and the midnight message of Paul Revere. And it was written um, in a particular rhythm that sounded like a galloping horse, and it's uh, always um, very, very atmospheric. Wisconsin, um, Capitol Building, Landing, and then this one, this stamp, stamp is interesting because it, if I go back to it before I take it away. Sorry, just press the button too soon. So the final, yes, because the um, it was the 100th anniversary of the birth of John Ringling, uh, who really was the first person to create the American circus. Um, and it pictures a, a, a clown, um, an individual, Johann Ludwig Jacob. And he, at that time, he was the first, um, that was the first stamp to picture um, a living, a first US stamp to picture um, a living person. California, here I just wanted to talk about the missions, um, 21 missions. Uh, thir about 30 miles apart, which was a day's journey by horseback, and it covered 650 miles um, in total. So they were deliberately built um, a day's journey away. And then I suppose I should focus on the middle one there, Death Valley. You'll have seen all the selfies recently of people taking their picture in Death Valley, next to the thermometer showing the um, hottest day on record, which didn't seem like much fun to me, but... Um, Takes all types. So there again, there's the um, 
a photo essay just showing you some minor differences in design. United States postage becomes US postage. Otherwise, it's pretty similar. And then that was the centenary of statehood stamp. Uh, on the right, that's just a publicity photo that the USPS um, issue, but you can see how much clearer the design is than yellow. I was never quite sure why anyone chose yellow for stamps. Um, Oregon, Oregon Trail, obviously very important. Um, and there's the Lewis and Clark Exposition, which was held in Portland in 1905. And that's a postal stationery card with the exposition postmark. But Kansas, this is quite interesting because these um, overprinted stamps, Kansas and, and the, Nebraska, um, and there was a lot of uh, robberies that were stealing stamps in one state and selling them in another. And um, they decided that they would uh, select Nebraska and Kansas as trial states and overprint the stamps. And they thought um, that that might help the problem. But um, fortunately, uh, they were going to use them in the other 46 states, but fortunately, um, it was uh, the, the whole thing was, was abandoned. And you can hardly see the overprint um, on the seven cent stamp at the bottom there. Um, our collectors really would have been rooked. And then this is an unusual page. So there's a centenary of North Dakota, state bird. And then we've also got South Dakota um, on the same page. Um, so apart from Mount Rushmore, which is um, thankfully that's the proper Mount Rushmore, um, there's not much to say about either state. So when, when your display of North Dakota includes a cover marking the dedication of a regional airport, which I haven't bothered to put in here, um, you know you're in a bit of trouble. Okay, uh, went quickly through these last 10 states to be admitted to the um, Union. Um, Montana. So Americans always boast about the biggest. Um, and here we've got... We are. Uh, the smallest. So they, they claim the shortest river in the world the Roe River, which is 201 feet long. And then, but back to the biggest, or again, the wealthiest boot uh, city in Montana has got roots mining history and is known as the richest hill on earth. Um, so there's the, the, the famous clothesline stamp, which came out for the um, 50th anniversary of statehood for Washington, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, all in the same year. Um, and it was designed by FDR, and it correctly shows the curve um, in the, the border. Um, and he apparently was responsible um, for that design. Uh, there's a stamp showing a, a boot, uh, um, but uh, issued for use in bulk rate, third class non profit mail. Uh, I mean, the American postal system has some weird and wonderful um, uh, postal rates. And then there's a big sky country shown on that um, show for the painting. There's another fantasy cancel and cover, which I bought the other week. Um, it's a rattlesnake cancel. Uh, it's 25th of June 32. And it, it was only in use for one day. So as I say, Blatantly philatelic, but I think quite good fun. Washington State, uh, only state to be named after a US president. Um, it's got lots of parks. You can see here from the postcard um, the geography of the, the state, and it's very mountainous and very interesting with all the sea inlets and um, use of ferries, etc. So it's and there was a postal stationery card from this pre-statehood, so it was when a, it was a territory. So it became a territory in 1853. Uh, this card is dated 1874, and it became a state in 1889. There's a centenary. Centenary of the territory up above, and the centenary of the state 
and down below. Idaho, um, well, we know what they do. You do in Idaho, you grow potatoes, um, Austrian winter peas and lentils, apparently. Um, this cover is one of my favourites, actually. I just um, find it particularly amusing. Um, and I thought that little cartoon, um, chickens can cross the road without having their motives questioned. It was um, quite um, clever. And then, again, Lewis and Clark figure quite a lot in Idaho. They went through um, quite a lot of Idaho. And Sakawea, or Sakagawea, um, was quite instrumental in helping them on their way. Uh, Wyoming was the first territory to grant suffrage to women. Uh, and it's not entirely clear why they did that, because you wouldn't think of people from Wyoming as being very liberal. Um, but the, the, the most convincing explanation is that there were um, six times the number of men to women. So they wanted to attract women to the state. And that's why they introduced um, suffrage. Um, but when they tried to become a state, the US Congress demanded that they rescind that. And they sent a telegram in response, we will remain out of the Union 100 years rather than come in without the women. So very commendable. Um, now, I promise you on the left is a painting by Jason Jackson Pollock, and on the right is the Wyoming toad, but you could be forgiven for mixing them up. And you'll see that um, the, the painting on the left is apparently called Convergence um, by Jackson Pollock, who said that when I'm painting, I'm not aware of what I'm doing, which seems pretty self-evident to me. Um, anyway, the Wy Wyoming toad was um, rescued from extinction. There's another Grand Teton big country um, print and bighorn sheep. Utah. Well, I have no idea why Salt Lake City has more plastic surgeons per capita, uh, but there we are. Um, if it's in my display here, it must be true. Uh, so there's Brigham Young um, saying this is the place which everybody thought was quite prophetic, but actually had more to do with the fact that he was ill and couldn't travel any further. So um, there's an unusual destination, a cover from um, Brigham, Utah, to the Marquesas Islands. Uh, and it went via San Francisco, um, where there's a date stamp, and arrived in Papiti on 20th of October, and we don't know if it ever got to Taiwi, which is 1,400 kilometers away from Papiti, apparently. So there we are. But anyway, it, it's a, it is an unusual destination. And there's a Utah territory cover um, from Park City, um, a corner cover with a mining company. Oklahoma, um, they have a lot to answer for nation's first parking meter. No idea why they've got more astronauts. Uh, I do know they had a nice musical Oklahoma. Um, as you see, more than 30,000 productions worldwide. There's a tele Western Union Telegraph cover coming from a, the Cherokee Nation to the Indian Territory. So, and there's Will Rogers. Um, would that I could echo his um, quote, but um, he apparently never met a man he didn't like. New Mexico, uh, more PhDs per capita than any other state. Um, people probably would have found that rather surprising until they saw the film Oppenheimer, and then they would immediately realize why it had to be true. So, but as you can see, there's one or two other um, national parks National Park, etc., Forest Service, um, that employ all these PhDs. Um, so here we've got some um, adobe buildings 
for ambition. Uh, then we've got some balloon flights, uh, two older balloons on the left and right, and then more modern hot air balloons in, in the middle, which you can see over the um, uh, in the, the sky in New Mexico at regular um, intervals. And Georgia O'Keeffe is particularly associated with the desert and New Mexico and her paintings. And if you're ever in Santa Fe Airport and you find a tube with a couple of O'Keeffe posters, um, they're mine. Um, I left them there um, by mistake when we visited, um, even if my wife thinks it was by design. Arizona, lots of national parks and obviously the Grand, Pan Can Grand Canyon being among them. Uh, nicknamed the Copper State and the Grand Canyon State. There's a postcard which has the map of the state engraved in copper. Um, honestly, can't see very well there, but it does. There's um, Grand Canyon. Uh, there's a postcard of Grand Canyon, uh, dated 1908. And there's Geronimo, who apparently had the eye of a hawk the stealth of a coyote, and the courage of a tiger. Very poetic. Uh, Arizona is quite amusing, actually, because um, they waited 49 years to become a state. Um, and they almost ended in 1912 um, in the Republican plan to keep control of the Senate. Um, and it was accepted by most of New Mexico because they were, they were connected to two states, but it was rejected by Arizona. Uh, people in Arizona wondered the inclusion of um, um, referendum, recall, direct election of senators, women's suffrage, and other reforms. Um, most of them were included in the Constitution that was rejected by Congress. So they then um, offered a new Constitution with the problematic provisions removed. Congress then voted to um, approve statehood. President Taft signed the statehood bill on the 14th of February, 1912, and state residents promptly put the provisions back in. So there we are. And then almost finally, Alaska. Um, Alaska is big, I mean, it doesn't matter what you statistic you come out, um, Alaska is big. And that leads me to one of my favorite postcards. So this is the barroom sign to all our friends in Texas. If you cut Alaska in half, Texas would be the third largest state. Um, it was called Seward's Folly when they bought it from Russia for two cents an acre, but I'm guessing most people don't think it's a, it was a folly today. And then finally, there's the Alaska Highway, um, which is 1,700 miles uh, running from Dawson Creek in British Columbia to Delta Junction in Alaska. Uh, it, um, the Alaska Highway is on my wife's bucket list, and she is looking for a driver who has it on their bucket list, because I certainly don't. And then that brings us full circle back to Hawaii, that we've talked at ad nauseum. Thanks. So what will be the 51st state? Not quite finished, just almost. Will it be Washington, D.C.? Will it be Puerto Rico, which has long been the favorite? Will it be Guam? Will it be the UK? And while that might sound ridiculous. And I remember when I was younger, um, we were quite often talked about as a potential 51st state as an alternative to joining Europe. And now we seem to have the best, the worst of both worlds, that we've alienated ourselves from both. So there we are. Um, I said I'd give you the quiz answers. So Rhode Island has got the smallest geographical area. Alaska is the largest, as I've already alluded to. California has the highest population. Wyoming, again alluded to, has the lowest population. 
New Jersey is the densest population. Maryland has got the highest per capita income. Maine has got the most easterly point of the USA. And Washington state has the most westerly point of the USA. Um, you're marking your own homework. Um, and I'm assuming that more, more than one person will have got um, uh, all eight questions correct. So my question is, what is the distance by car from Key West in Florida to Anchorage in Alaska? And giving you a few seconds to think about it before I tell you the answer, which is 5,110 miles. And I'll definitely not be driving that. Would you say there? That's all, folks. And <laughs> thank you for your patience. Thank you very much indeed, George. And perhaps you could all join me in uh, saying thank you in the traditional manner. See, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, that, was, that was fantastic, George. Ah. Why some people think of the uh, the odd question for you, and I see Adele's got her hand up already. Um, but I'd just like to make one observation, if I may. Right at the start of your um, talk, um, on I think it was the 32 cent stamp showing the Panama Canal. Yeah. Um, uh, as many of you know, I spent um, a, a number of years in an early life um, in the Merchant Navy, and I went through the Panama a number of times. And those um, engines which pull the ships through uh, are known as mules. And um, it's not the first time we've persuaded, uh, usually uh, a beginner, shall we say, to see, sometimes the wives who come over occasionally, uh, that uh, they should um, save the bread uh, to feed the mules, because that gives them greater encouragement to pull the ships through. Uh, <laughs> it just reminded me of that. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Right. Oh, um, I don't see any hands up at the moment. Does anybody like to um, ask a question? 